What's up world, One Tech Traveler here. So as I was about to fall asleep last night, I had a notification on my phone from Microsoft sharing their latest announcement of the Surface Go 2 and the Surface Book 3. Following up on the video that I did previously talking about the Surface Go and why I chose it over the Surface Pro 7. If you haven't watched it, definitely check it out. There's a lot of good thoughts that I shared and with everything finally announced and official, uh, I couldn't wait to just share my thoughts being a Surface Go owner, how it compares to the Surface Go 2 and to help people who have been in in two minds whether they should go for the Surface Go, Surface Go 2 or the Surface Pro. So without further ado let's get started. Like always you can find my full written opinion by checking out my website at onetechtraveler.com. Join the Team KBA community to see more awesome videos like this one. So let's talk about the Surface Go 2. Uh, it was rumored and there was discussions about whether Microsoft was going to be making a successor to the Surface Go and I felt it was only a matter of time because it kind of filled a spot, a niche, a gap uh, in what the Surface portfolio offered and also that the Surface Book 3 is kind of due a new refresh. Uh, I've got the original Surface Book and it's touching on four and a half years now. Uh, so kind of having both of those two devices and these two announcements coming out at the same time is pretty big news for me. Uh, I'll be talking about the Surface Book 3 at a later point. So this is all about the Surface Go 2. Now digesting some of the tech specs and some of the new features, uh, these are the things that you pretty much need to know. Firstly, Microsoft have increased the screen size. So whereas the Surface Go was originally a 10 inch, this one is pushing 10.5 inch, but still keeps the same fundamental design, which is what I like about the Surface Go. The bezels of the screen, uh, while I've been very much used to it, but was something I highlighted earlier that kind of was a bit bigger than the rest of the Surface family, uh, has been slightly improved and it still has the same three by two aspect ratio, but they have bumped up the screen resolution. It is now now a 1920 by 1080 whereas the Surface Go was just a little bit short of that full HD resolution and the pixel density is now pushing 220 ppi uh, which means you are going to get slightly more crisper and sharper images from the display it's the exact same pixel sense uh, display technology and if you are wondering how much of an upgrade the Surface Go 2 is from the original, you can kind of see this more as an iterative refresh. Nothing really groundbreaking, just modernizing it with new parts and tweaking the original design concept of the Go. Now the biggest thing going for the Surface Go 2, which is something that I sort of predicted uh, in my original video, is the fact how the Surface Go 2 is now kitted out with an Intel Core M3 processor. It was originally a processor seen in the entry level of the Surface Pro series, allowing them to hit the cheaper price points and then reserving the performance minded versions with the Intel Core i3, i5 and i7 versions. Things have changed a bit. Uh, they've been pushing that more higher up and the Surface Go 2 allows them to bring that kind of performance into the smaller sized form factor and also hitting that cheaper price points. So what does that all mean? Microsoft say that you can get up to 64% faster performance over both of the Surface Go models. Uh, that was packing the Intel Pentium Gold processor. And in my own experience for what I've been doing on it, it's been absolutely great. Like I've honestly had no problems. The fluid experience has been uh, really smooth, but the Intel Core M3 is now gonna allow people like you to really push a bit more while still enjoying the smaller size for the extra mobility, which personally I've been really enjoying. You're gonna find two different outfits, much like in the original. One is fitted with a four gigabyte RAM, 64 gigabyte eMMC storage. So it's still a bit of a shame that they've retained that much slower class of storage in the base 64 gigabyte model. I would have liked them to see even just a 64 4 gig uh, SSD version might be okay for some people who are definitely on a budget but want a surface experience but the higher model is just going to future proof you with your performance software and things going forward. So the change of the Intel Core M3 is going to be in the more expensive model that is still kitted out with the same eight gigabyte RAM, 128 gigabyte SSD storage, which has been really fantastic. 
you're just getting that much higher speed bump uh, over the Intel Gold Pentium that was kitted out in both of the original Surface Go. Everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, of course, it's gonna be slightly wider, slightly taller because the screen is larger and the weight is gonna be slightly heavier, but you're still looking at just over half a kilogram, uh, which is very impressive. I've really enjoyed the lightness of the Surface Go. You're still retaining the same micro SD card slot underneath the kickstand here the USB-C port which has been such a game changer with being able to charge it using my power bank and my existing cables especially if you have high powered USB-C cables and just general data transfer it is still compatible with Microsoft's pre-existing surface accessories so my surface pen will work on that the surface dial if you want extra intuitive control using the rotary functions in certain softwares or just controlling like windows 10 operations but one of the things that is not compatible is the type keyboard so i've got my cobalt blue here which matches my shirt i didn't do that on purpose by the way um, but because of the larger screen it means yes it can still connect but it's not going to line up well. You're gonna find it slightly short around the perimeter of the Surface Go 2 if you have a original because it's just smaller. Um, so that's something to bear in mind, which means you will have to fork out for a new type cover keyboard. Um, but besides that, everything is the same. Now, there's definitely one thing that you have to consider if everything sounds rosy, like you wanna go for the Surface Go 2, and that is, of course, the price. So the original Surface Go, the higher end eight gigabyte, 128 gigabyte storage model, that one was priced at $549 without any of the additional accessories. With the new Intel Core M3 and slightly increased uh, screen size and all the goodness of the Surface Go 2, the starting price of the highest model has actually increased and now costs $629, which is an extra $80 on top. So while the extra power boost is really compelling, um, especially over the original Surface Go, uh, you are having to pay a premium on top, uh, which is an extra $80. That's gonna be like 75% of a type cover keyboard Board. and with the original Surface Go phasing out, you'll most likely see some sales on that as well. Now, since I've been using the Surface Go for a couple of months, complementary to my Surface Book, uh, I find I'm still using that as my main machine, doing more of the productive work. So when I'm typing up my articles, uh, editing uh, pictures on the fly at cafes after a shoot, or just wanting to have that more mobile uh, setup, um, I've pretty much used this in many respects besides video editing. Um, definitely don't want to push it on that kind of processor and it is workable, but you are looking at very limited workflow and the ways how you can really use it. But for everything else, the Surface Go has really been great. Again, I'll cover everything in the final Surface Go uh, video review, but the tight cover keyboard is starting to show signs of wear from all of the sweat of my palms in the two corners. Uh, the trackpad is really amazing on that glass and gives the screen that extra protection when it comes to actually doing work web browsing, media streaming, even just using some emulators like Bluestacks to open certain Android apps on here. So, you know, we are sort of going into the technicalities and also connecting my Samsung Galaxy Note 10 plus 5G phone using Samsung DeX, just trying it out. Um, it actually works very well. Um, the machine is really nicely built. Um, I've put in a micro SD card in there for extra storage. And again, it's just a really nice travel sized, fully productive PC that you can use professional and personal capacities. One thing that looks like Microsoft hasn't necessarily improved on is the battery life. Now they quote just over 10 hours which is okay, it's not great, it's not really pushing the boundaries, especially if you are looking at alternatives like the iPad Pro and the tablet space. But remember, you are getting a full-fledged uh, Windows 10 PC here, uh, but for my use, I'm only getting roughly four or five hours, which is usable, not great. It would be nicer to have it last longer, um, but since I am pushing a bit more with my photo editing um, and using features that are going to push the processor a lot harder, then that number has come down a lot. I would expect similar numbers with the Surface Go 2, but unless I have it in my hands to really compare, then my experience on the Surface Go is what I'm expecting similarly. Um, but generally, I really love the Surface Go and there's 
nothing out in the Windows space that is going to fill that up as a capable Windows 10 PC in something that looks as stylish and offers a really nice touch screen and full PC experience. So with that being said, what do I think of the Surface Go 2? And is it something that you should upgrade to or buy compared to the Surface Pro or the original Surface Go? For existing Surface Go owners, I would say no. So it's definitely not worth upgrading because you're gonna get a similar experience to what you have now. That's better saved for something fundamentally different, perhaps the Surface Duo, the Surface Neo, uh, Microsoft's uh, more slimmer dual screen uh, form factor devices coming out in the end of 2020 or at least planning to, I still think that the Surface Go is really doing a great job for everything that I want. For people who are looking for the first time whether to go for a Go or Surface Pro, it kind of depends, of course, on your preference. The Surface Go is definitely made for being productive in a much smaller form factor. For me, the biggest draw of the Go is because of the size. They have slightly increased it in the Surface Go 2, which may slightly reduce its charms depending, uh, but it adds the extra screen estate to see more. It can get a bit crapped if you are using a desktop software for me, like photo editing, um, Adobe example. The next one, the Surface Go does not have a fan built in and it doesn't need it even on the Intel Core M3. So if you want something that is uh, gonna be well regulated temperature wise and it's not gonna be blowing hot air and make noises, um, then the Surface Go is also a much more quieter PC to take with you. It's a couple of hundred grams lighter than the Surface Pro, um, but the Surface Pro, of course, is gonna give you tremendously more power uh, in a similar sized tablet form factor. It also is going to cost quite a bit more, but you're also gonna find once you've fully kitted out a Surface Go, it's gonna cost similar to a entry-level Surface Pro. Uh, my thoughts, if you don't need that much power, the Surface Go, honestly, is a great investment by as a secondary or as a primary machine. If you want the latest and greatest and you kinda wanna future-proof yourself, then the Surface Go 2 has the extra performance to just give you a bit more breathing room when it comes to pushing the software, but still retaining that mobility and agility. And then for all things considered with the Surface Pro, that one's gonna give you the best power in the same form factor. Much bigger screen estate sort of sacrifices its mobility, but widely it's still one of the most agile, uh, full-blown PC and a tablet size form factor. And they are all pretty much going to give you that same great Surface experience. So to summarize, Surface Go owners, you don't need to feel bad about having the original. It's a great machine. People who are new to the Surface family, if you're interested in either of the Go, Go 2 or the Pro 7, you'll most likely find a great deal on the Surface Go later on. And if you do, go for the Surface Go. I think it's an absolutely incredible machine if you are not pushing it hard. Surface Go 2 is going to be the most pricier since it's of course just launched. It's gonna need a new set of accessories so it's best suited for those who have other Surface devices that complement it or is new to the Surface like tablet experience that you can sort of add on extra. If you already have a type cover keyboard, you are going to need to buy a new one and that is going to cost you a lot of money, like $150 or so. And if you like the Surface design but you need that power, then it's the Surface Pro. So thanks a lot world, I hope you enjoyed it. I literally just wanted to make this video as close to when they launched it because there's a lot of you who are asking. If you have any questions or you want to learn more, uh, let me know in the comments just down below and make sure you stay tuned for my final Surface Go video review. I know I've been sitting on it, but I've been using it in my day to day in a variety of ways like traveling, shooting, going to cafes and such. Um, so I'm in a great position to finally share my thoughts. Make sure you join the Team KBA community by subscribing to my channel. Thanks a lot world, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one, but until then, keep being awesome. Peace.